Hey everybody, bringing you a little different video this week. Uh, I've got my little baby Sakai lathe up on eBay for sale. Uh, it's kind of a sad day. Decided to put this up for sale about a week or two ago. Um, the dynamite, um, link up above um, to some of the videos on that. The dynamite's coming along and it's uh, just a little bit more suited to my needs. Um, the, it's weird looking through these glasses. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I, I hate wearing safety glasses unless I need them. Um, so yeah, the dynamite's coming along. The, the turret tool changer really comes in handy for me. Um, it's a little higher horsepower, a little more rigid. Um, but this is this is where it all began for for making knobs. If you have a Cripple Concepts knob at this point, it was made on here. I haven't sold any made off the new lathe yet. Uh, but I want to walk through a few things about this lathe. Um, I'm going to put the link up on my eBay page. I would love for this to go to somebody else who uses a wheelchair. Um, I'll pan down in a minute here. It's actually on a stand that I built for it so I can drive right underneath of it. It's a nice size lathe. It's a three inch chuck on it. Um, it, it it's not huge, it's, it's just nice to use. Uh, and there's something kind of comforting about using a manual lathe that's been converted to CNC. So what this is, is a Sakai ML360. Uh, it was also sold under, I think it was Mannix brand. And I always oh, not call it Toyo, but that's not right. There's another brand. Um, I'll put a link below the video to a uh, article about these lathes. It was a camera company that couldn't get a good high precision small lathe, so they made their own. Um, they made a couple sizes. This is the big size. Um, they actually had a milling attachment you could get for them. I don't have that. This one has been completely converted to CNC. Um, it's got NEMA 23 motors on it. Um, I did upgrade those. I bought this from an auction. It was set up with no drivers. Um, I think they'd been running it and they didn't come with a computer or drivers. Um, so I had to uh, put on the computer and drivers and I upgraded the motors because the other ones just didn't quite have the grunt that I needed. Uh, Original lead screws still, so there's a little bit of backlash in there. Um, in the Mach 3 software, I've actually taken that out, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, you, can, you can adjust for that. I would recommend if somebody was to really want to make this the ultimate lathe, that would be the first upgrade I would do is convert those to ball screws. Um, comes with Mach 3 and a computer um, to run it, an old XP computer, a Windows XP computer. Um, it'll come with a wireless keyboard and basically a plug and play. Uh, I do have limit switches on it, but I've never actually hooked those up. Well, that's a lie. I did have those hooked up, but I used too stiff a wire, so when it traveled, they were popping, the, the connectors popped off, and that would make it stop cutting. So um, somebody just needs to put a little lighter gauge wire on here, and it'd work great. Uh, the breakout board's all set up for it and all that, so that's not a big deal. Um, I have an A to Z CNC, which is a company that went out of business, but some folks out, it was in Colorado. Some other folks in Colorado bought most of their inventory and tooling, and they're gonna, either they've already started or they're gonna keep making this stuff. Um, it's a quick change tool post, so you just whack the handle, and you can reach over here and slide the, the tool right off. This is a uh, little, uh, tool with carbide insert. Uh, it comes with the rest of the pack of those. I think I have eight more of the inserts. Um, it'll actually come with a total of five of these holders, three for these little quarter inch tools, um, one for a boring bar, and one for a cutoff tool. Um, so it'll, all, it'll come with all those. It comes with the three jaw chuck that's in it right now, as well as an ER40 chuck that fits the spindle taper. Um, I have an ER16 collet holder on the tailstock. Uh, I don't have any collets that are coming with it. I'm saving the collets for the new lathe, um, but those are only a couple hundred bucks. You can buy a nice set off of, um, I, I actually bought some Chinese ones off of eBay and was, was quite happy with them um, for the precision that, that I was expecting. They, they were fine. Um, trying to think what else. Um, it'll come with a bit of tooling that actually fits in the tool holders too. I don't have any boring bars that fit this, but I do have I do have the, uh, the carbide tool here, some uh, high-speed steel. Um, that's about it. I don't, I don't really have a ton of tooling for it, but um, yeah, it's one of the expenses. Uh, it comes with the collet wrench, and the, um, I do have all the back gears for it for when it was a manual lathe for threading. Those will come along with it. I doubt anybody would want to convert this back to. Uh, 
a manual machine. This is about the size of the little mini Grizzlies and the mini um, uh, lathes from Harbor Freight, but far, far, far higher quality. Um, it's, it's a really rigid, nice, solid lathe. Uh, you are limited a bit on your speeds because of the lead screws, because the, the lead screws have a bit of friction in them, and, and I've looped them really well, and there's still a bit of friction, so um, yeah, I'll jump over and I'll actually show you the, the lathe in action now. All right, so here we are back over at the lathe. Um, I hope I got everything in the shot that you can see. I pull up the Mach 3 manual screen. So I'm gonna run full speed that, of what these, uh, what the travels are in Z and X. So that start, that slow delay on startup in um, each direction was taking the backlash out of it. That's adjustable in Mach 3. So I'm pretty close there. I'm going to start the spindle and then I'm going to go in and touch off and I'll just take a quick pass. I'm actually going to check my speeds here. Well, I can take a lot faster pass than that. Oh, I had the feed rate slowed way down. I just realized I was adjusting the wrong setting there. Uh -huh. There we go. You just hit the tab button to bring that screen up and... So I never did hook up the, a relay for the on-off switch. So right now it's manually turned on and off here. The kill switch up on the back runs the spindle motor and the kill switch down below here you can't actually see on the screen right now, um, but the bottom left, there's another kill switch. That was wired in line with the limit switches to kill the computer side. I'd highly recommend whoever buys this, wire it all into one kill switch that the breakout board runs, and then you'll be able to run the spindle on and off within the software. So I'll go ahead and turn this on and I'll make a quick pass. So there you go, that was a quick, oh, about a hundred thou deep pass um, on just a piece of aluminum tubing I had. I've cut plastic on this, I've cut steel a little bit. Um, with steel you really have to lube it a lot. I use an acid brush and a little oil cup, the oil cup will come with it. And I just would brush it on by hand. Uh, I'm trying to think what else there is to tell you. Um, let me actually come back here and, oops, sorry, I bumped the tripod. So I'm gonna, flip you down here. So that's the oil cup there and the red stand is the stand that it's on and then all the electronics. I'm actually going to go ahead and stop the camera and take your handheld to show you the rest. Alright, so you're handheld now so I apologize for any wobbling around. Uh, that's the T-handled wrench I use to tighten the chuck and then I'll pan down here to the, the stand. The stand is made out of 2 by 3 steel uh, some rectangular tubing uh, so you can get right under it. If you're an able-bodied person or an upright person, you probably will want this on casters for a little bit more height or up on some blocks. I built it low on purpose. Um, I believe this computer is an HP. I bought it from an auction or a Craigslist, I don't even remember. 
Uh, I think it's an HP though. And then, uh, sorry, that's a wrench hanging off the mill. And then here's the electronics box. Those are the two uh, motor drivers, the power supply. Um, you can't really see the breakout board real well underneath of there. And then everything's wired into one power strip. So uh, with the hit of one switch on the power strip, I can shut it all down. So yeah, there you go. I'm gonna show you a little about how these motors are, are hooked up here. These are the brackets that hold the stepper motors on. And over here, the limit switch that's just glued to the top there. A little look down in at the flex connector and the uh, aluminum plates. Motors kind of tucked in behind there. And I have the belt set up on the fat, no, on the slowest pulley right now. Um, it is just one, three different pulleys. Tailstock is operational. I use that to drill the holes in the bases of my joystick knobs I built. There's the quick tool changer. This will also come with the ER40 call, like I say, that'll go and replace that um, the three jaw bison chuck, that's a bison chuck. That's not a not a no name brand, that's a nice bison. So yeah, there you go. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to see this go to a good home. And in case anybody wonders, this is what I upgraded to. It's not a whole lot bigger, but it's just enough bigger that it handles a little bit more for me and it has a uh, five or six position turret on there. I guess it's a six position which is real handy when you're a quadriplegic.